I'd like to record this for the next assignment, which is a landscape painting. So as students go outside and work on the landscape, they need to select a view that will allow them to um, have a sense of atmospheric perspective. So atmospheric perspective is, it's also called aerial, pers aerial perspective, but it's where the um, particles of air come between a subject in the distance and start to obscure uh, the view. So in, you can see this in nature on a foggy day or on a day with a lot of pollen in the air or smoke. So as you go into the distance, colors diminish, colors bleed out, and you tend to see uh, less detail. It's a gradual thing too. So in a painting like this or a photograph like this, in the foreground, objects closest to the viewer are usually lower or lowest low on the picture plane that's called relative position and then as they recede into space they elevate or they go higher up on the picture plane so in this picture you can see the elements closest or lowest on the picture plane and they also have the highest amount of contrast meaning the darkest darks and lightest lights are side by side the colors are the richest or the most saturated in the foreground. And this is something you see in nature. And then as you diminish and go into the background, you can see how the values and the colors dissipate. They diminish and they almost become closer or the closest to the sky as they go back. And this is something you see in nature, but it's also something artists have been using for centuries where you mimic what's happening in nature, but you also show through value through contrast and through color, how things change as they go back in space. So obviously in this picture, the greens, the, the richest greens, the deepest greens are in the foreground, and then you can see a diminishment as you go back into space. So in this assignment, as you go outside, as you choose a view, you need to show a difference between near and far. It's that simple. So you need to come up with a view that has a very definite foreground and then as it goes back into space, you may not have this dramatic effect like in a painting like this, but you can control this. And it's something that the artist controls like linear perspective. So how you dish out or how you, you control detail, saturation should be controlled where more of it's in the foreground and there's a, a lessening, a diminishment as you go back into space. So looking at people like Turner, who usually had kind of a foggy or misty atmosphere is known for this look. Uh, you, you will see a difference though in the foreground where there's much more uh, detail, contrast, concentration, and then a diminishment as you recede into space. Or somebody like Casper David Friedrich, same thing. Foreground, most amount of information, dissipation into the background, and then colors lighten up as you recede into space towards the sky. And then finally, Claude Lorraine, great French painter, neoclassicist painter, foreground, and actually you can see zones, you see foreground, middle ground, background that artists have used. Uh, but there's a, a controlled diminishment of color, saturation, detail, and so on. So it's something you see in nature, but it's something that artists have used as a device, if I can call it that, to really represent and show space. So on campus, you're going to need to choose a view that will be um, developed. I want everyone to begin with a, uh, a view, but then to use or to create at least three small sketches. And sketches can be three and a half by five inches, very simple thumbnail drawings to give you a sense of the view and how you're going to show space near and far. Uh, and then to go on to an 18 by 24 canvas panel. And that will then become the final painting. So it's going to be uh, developed on site and also a combination of the photograph, working from memory, and hopefully working on site. But because of nature, nature changes, times change uh, with the seasons we have now, season we have fall, things are changing very dramatically. So. This is something that needs to be developed um, and the, the view needs to be just finalized so that the painting can begin and it's something you can start very quickly. In a painting, if you can see this Claude Lorraine, 
as you work from back to front, you also notice that the sky has a gradation too. The sky usually is the deepest blue directly above your head, and then as you recede or drop down to the horizon, there's a, there's a diminishment as well. So you have what's happening in the, on the ground plane mirroring in the sky. So whatever's closest to you is darkest, and then it diminishes. Same thing with the sky. The deepest blues or grays or whatever the sky is are greatest at the top of the painting, which is closest to the picture plane, and then it recedes also as you drop back into space. So painters will traditionally start with the sky first, and do the sky in the background first, and then in general, as a principle and as a practical measure, work from back to front. So if you're, if you're painting um, and you have a lot of information in the foreground, you may want to save that for last. Otherwise, if you did all the information in the foreground first, you'd be painting around that object to get this bleed or the sky look. So it's sometimes more practical to do the sky first and then work your way into the foreground so that the, the information or the heavily laden information in the foreground is saved for last. And that's something you can place on top. So the, um, the assignment is pretty straightforward and I want people to have this done by October 30th. So we have roughly two more weeks on this assignment, but I think people can get started, they can find a view, and then it should go rather quickly once they've worked through the process of getting the um, uh, view and working out the sketches and then actually beginning and controlling color and detail. So hopefully this helps everyone um, get a start and know where to begin for this assignment. Thank you.